Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at a new game system I recently picked up. This is a very cheap one I picked up. And the question remains, what are we going to get for the money? So this device, I must say, like, when you're looking at the box, Semfio Cotrador Gamepad, I think this is, like, dedicated to the Spanish market or something like that. Nevertheless, it comes with the all-famous, let's say, controller, like the PlayStation controller. But let's do a quick unboxing and let's see what are we going to get in the inside. <laughs> so in the inside we're going to get ourselves the wireless 2.4 gigahertz controllers but the thing is with these controllers they are like not the cheapest version they are like okay quality i'm quite surprised to see that they actually go to give you like okay quality controllers especially when i'm going to look into the quality what i'm going to do is like looking at the joystick they have like this real rubber compound like the cheap ones like the cheap to the cheap cheap have just plastic and when you go to feel like this way or this method you can just feel that the buttons do have like a very nice click yeah and overall they are like chemical and cheap and yeah not like the best quality nothing to be compared with the original playstation controller like these compartments are very difficult to open but in the inside we need to have like two AAA batteries i already know because i have reviewed and held myself so many of these controllers in my hand it's because they are like the most common controls you're going to get with these things not to forget the toilet paper manual and this time we're not going to get ourselves like a typical android manual they're trying to like put in these boxes but no you're just actually going to get yourself like an okay quality like it's just a basic explanation how everything works if you do have like some problems most of the time this is absolutely pointless yeah what are we going to get with the system itself i must say that oh boy it's really tiny like it's really tiny the x6 is also like they call this and i must say like when you compare this with the controller like you can make like a portable thing out of this. But what are we going to get? We're going to get ourselves the HDMI at the back. We have an on off switch that doesn't really work that great. Like you can see like it gets stuck or something like that. Input for the power supply. Then we have like a USB at the left and another one at the right. And here we have the SD card. With a mostly like... Yeah, okay. So it doesn't even show what it is. Okay then. Yeah, right. <clears throat> So that's a little bit of a bummer and you need to be careful with these things because they are using some like really crappy quality. So a backup making of this is absolutely not a great, like a, like a bad idea. Because if this thing most of the time gets corrupted, you will have a problem. And you're done with gaming. Okay, the system has been plugged in and the next thing that we need to do is put in the batteries, of course. But what I did notice is like it comes with one USB dongle. It's kind of cool. So we have like one USB dongle and that connects to both controllers. So that leaves us like one extra port that we can use. But nevertheless, let's plug it in and let's see what we're going to get with the menu. All right, all right, all right. This thing works fine. Okay, let's go. And when powering on the system, this is actually the menu that we're going to get. It is nothing very fancy, but guess what? Nostalgia Magic Box. That is a system that we have seen before, but this time we're just going to get ourselves a completely different layout. So that's quite interesting. Powering on the system, this is actually what we're going to get. The menu is straightforward, and I must say, like, it is a good thing, but also a bad thing. So what you can see over here, like, all the names are completely messed up. We do have, like, this very nice thumbnail at the right. Then we have class, and the basically class are, like, the different platforms. Main, 8-bit, 60-bit is all, of course, here, like, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive. But it is quite limited with, basically, like, a couple of, like, different platforms. Search option, let's try, for example, Mortal Kombat, if it's even being on here. Let's see how it will search and how fast. All right, there we go. Favorite, history, and download. And download, is, wouldn't be surprised to go to be a separate folder and the SD card. Then we have like the settings, language. Language, we do have like English, Portuguese, Espanol, France, German, or Deutsch. Then we have Italian, and I have no idea which it is or what it is. But then we have like the tune can be changed out, button. <laughs> that is so wrong! <laughs> okay. Okay. I think tune number four is the less annoying. Alright, let's go back. Background music. We got background music. Okay, can we go in there? Oh, there it is! Okay. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, product information. It does show over here like... 2022 and is released 2.0 so it's not that, like the first version factory default yeah it can be like only factory default for every single like setting but it's possible if you go to do this it's going to be putting to in like say an asian language so we're not like recommend putting the yeah just messing around with it so let's try some games just see actually what are we going to get with the emulation performance 
All right, let's start off with some dinos and beefcake, or sorry, beefcake and dinos. But the thing is like, when you're looking at it, like there is no, like say, settings that we can do. Pressing select to start will bring us to this menu where you can make a quick load, quick save, but there is nothing much you can do. Up, there is no aspect ratio. See, and that's the thing what I hate about these devices. Sometimes you can just like have all these fancy options that we're waiting for for every single, like, every single year we're asking for them. And out of nothing, a new system comes and they just remove it. Oh boy. Next up, let's see if we can get some good emulation over here as a performance. Sometimes these cheaper systems will have struggle with hard of fighting. Okay, I must say the D-pad of this thing is absolutely... It's not bad at all with the controller. Wow! Yeah, the downside to this is that we don't have any option to going back over here like by pressing select and start. There is no way of getting a different screen resolution. So we have like an uber stretch screen of turtles. Oh boy, this looks so horrible. Like the overall like performance is pretty good, but come on. <laughs> and the same goes for like Game Boy Color. Oh man, this. Oh. Okay, so the reason I was a little bit silent now for a couple of seconds, I need to listen to the soundtrack and you can just hear that the stallers, it's not like it should be. Also here's the stretch screen to the maximum level. I don't have any audio delay, that doesn't like a common problem with this thing. I did notice some screen tearing going on. Yeah, a shitload of screen tearing, holy shit. But in general, it's still very well playable, so in that case, it's not like super bad. I see my share of shitty emulation, and it's not the baddest. Alright, so let's just skip to the Mega Drive or Genesis part. Okay, you can already see like the, at the right, we do have like some glitching going on. Also, there we're going to get to glitch. Wow. Yeah, we're going to have like a shitload of glitching, so. Oh boy, like the game is completely messed up. Unfortunately, and that's the thing that we always need to check out for. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, so next up, let's try a little bit of my, my favorite games to play. Absolutely great adventure game. We do see some glitching at the left. But besides having them a little weird glitch over there and at the left at the right, we have some good performance. Don't see any big, let's say, screen tearing whatsoever. All right, so next up, let's try a little bit of a Soul Calibur. And I must say that, oh man, I love the music of this game. I've played this so much back in the day. Ow. Okay. But the thing is, this is basically like the ultimate benchmark for this box because there is no main Mortal Kombat so we cannot really test it out but despite having some issues with 16-bit, uh, PlayStation 1 seems to be running just fine. Unfortunately you cannot like tweak with the system whatsoever. Okay so let's try another game just to be safe that everything seems to be working as it should be. And with Soul Calibur, we did have like a minor hiccup that didn't show you in the video, but that's more like the general problem with some older emulators, but nothing to worry about. But there we go. Ooh. Oh, we do have like an unplayable situation over here, but like... That is a little bit of a bummer that we do have like... Why can't I do my move? Oh, it doesn't matter. It runs off the shit anyway. So another thing I also noticed that... We do have issues with the control configuration. I've noticed like my B button is the X button, for example. So yeah, that is not like an optimal way to play some PlayStation. So everything is going to be messed up if you're going to play some fighting games. Okay, so let's try some Wipeout just to see how that actually works. Is it like a single game issues or is it just multiple games? But from the start off, you can see we do have like some good performance. So I am guessing that this was like a single game that had issues. Kind of weird because I understand like Tekken 3 is not like super demanding. It's kind of weird that the game didn't really work that great, so maybe they didn't really set it right with an emulator. But again, we cannot really check. But again, it's going to be a mixed performance when it comes to PlayStation. So let's take a closer look at this game. See how it works. 
Normally I don't try that that much, but it seems to be working just fine. Kind of funny to find Atari on a system like this. Okay, I was really curious how to open it up. I was, first I was thinking it's going to be like this plastic fantastic case that they click together, but no, after like looking underneath the rubbery feet, you can see that we have some screws that we need to remove. Don't know how many there are, so let's remove all of these things. And oh yeah, this is basically the way how they put this thing together. After removing all of the screws, six of them, so this is what we're going to find in the inside. What I find even like more interesting that this is absolutely like a brand new model they created. Here it says like X4 game, the date when it was basically made. And here it shows version 1.2 and the software shows 2.0. So it's kind of interesting just to see in general like how did they make these things. So like back in the day they are like creating these things out of like old like Android boxes. But they're just like making them like just brand new now. And look at this like how tiny these PCBs are. Let's see if I can remove the cooling. They're using like this double sided, or is this like thermal paste or something? Like, looks like sticky thermal paste. But unfortunate, we cannot really see what kind of specs they're using. Look at this, like they didn't even like imp, or this just sand it off, or over here we do have like two RAM chips. So I think it was something like, I did look it up, but the uni c like i couldn't really find any information so it's going to be one or two gigabyte nevertheless it's unfortunate we cannot see what kind of chip they're using over here but the, seeing that like playstation runs quite horrible it's not going to be any fancy like say tech they're using and again for the money we cannot really complain and overall like we don't have any issues with the on and off switch i think there was just a general issue that this button is like basically like scraping with the case over here so that's the reason why it doesn't like always go on on and off position but yeah this is what you're going to get in the inside so when you're looking at this x6 like very cheap like game system i must say that they being very creative like getting old school stack and just slapping it on a new pcb and creating something plug and play unfortunately we did have some issues with some emulator but that's something i already expect for the money and if you didn't know now you know that's mostly like what you're going to get with this cheap china stuff but thank you for watching consider subscribing hit that little bell and let me know what do you think of this it would be great to see you in the next video